Hey everybody, I'm back again, this time with a recap of some uh, items that I've recently picked up. So starting over here, a couple items from the early 50s, these tops, Redbacks, uh, two guys I collect, uh, an early win, and a Gil Hodges. They look fairly good. Uh, I've got a Monty Irving and a Near Mintiment 8. And looks just as good as these two do. So even though the grades are a little lower, I think the cards have really good appeal. I was able to pick up some high quality 1959 tops as well. Let me get some extra light here. Three commons, although Lou Burdett was a really good pitcher. Some interesting items, these 1963 Jellos. I got it primarily for the Robin Roberts, but they were being sold in lots, so I just picked up this lot of four. Jello cards, very similar to the postcards of that year, a little bit smaller. Obviously, on the back of Jello boxes, Jello puddings, and uh, various dessert assortments. Some of the common ones that are on the less likable products are harder to find. You'll see there that little red stripe right there. On the Jello brand ones, the stripe doesn't go uh, to the edge of the card like it does in the Jello. That's another indicator if you don't know if you have a Jello or a postcard from 63. Other than that, they're very, very similar. So, four of those. Once again, another Lubert out there. And then here, a 1964 Tops leader card, uh, RBI leaders with Hank Aaron on the top. Then uh, another oddball piece, the 65 Tops transfer with the Brooks Robinson. And his globe imports from 69. A couple other 69 items, uh, two Deckel edges, the Stremski and then the Hoyt Wilhelm. Of note, the Hoyt Wilhelm number 11. There was also, a, I think, a Jim Foy is number 11 as well. They kind of split the set. And then a very nice uh, 74 Brooks Robinson and a near Mintiment 8. I like that card. It's a good portrait shot of Brooks there towards the tail end of his career. And then on to 75 Hostess there, the hand cut and the near Mintiment 8. And I wouldn't call myself a Yastrzemski collector, although there's two Yastrzemskis in this mail day. I just picked up the 75 because I'm a, a fan of the 75 design. And uh, now I picked this came in the mail yesterday and looking at it, it's a very sharp card. Uh, very well centered, uh, very very nice corners, edges. No print defects that I can see. I don't know why that's a near mint 7 and not higher. If I pulled that from a pack, I might even think it's a mint 9 with that good centering on it. But uh, very sharp near mint 7. On to some junk wax era stuff uh, for my Steve Carlton collection. This a cool photo of him pitching here on this 82 Don Ross. Some late era Pete Rose here in this Fleer and a near mint, excuse me, a mint nine. A really uh, a big nostalgia piece, this 87 Tops Tiffany Mark McGuire. Just a near mint to mint eight. I wanted to get this card. I remember when I first started collecting cards in 87, I bought uh, quite a few packs of 87 Tops and I really wasn't at the point yet where I was following individual players, but I remember my friend telling me about this guy, Mark McGuire, who was this really amazing ball player. So I remember going through my collection and realizing I had his card. You know, I had this card, albeit it wasn't a Tiffany. It was just a regular 87 tops. And that was my first introduction to really understanding about uh, PCing or collecting players. And I became a, I became a McGuire collector there. Of course, he had that great rookie year in 87 where he hit those 49 home runs to win the rookie of the year. But uh, that was my first, uh, one of my first memories of actually card collecting was uh, this 87 Tops Mark McGuire card. On to some other 80s guys. Uh, Randy Johnson rookie card in the near mint to I bought this card fairly cheap and the, the seller threw in this Don Ross Kurt Schilling. I think it's a near mint 7, so really no value on it, but uh, still. Still cool. Uh, Schilling was a great pitcher. Two of the key pitchers out of that 89 Don Ross set. You know, there are quite a few key rookies in that 89 Don Ross set. So it's just that junk wax era. They're not, you know, they don't hold a lot of value, but 
would probably be a fun product if you wanted to buy a box for the cheap just to, to rip open some Hall of Fame rookies. And then lastly, a basketball card for my Elvin Hayes collection, a 73 tops. Pretty cool looking card. Uh, I'm, I'm noticing that the old vintage basketball cards are starting to get a little bit popular. And when I say popular, I mean more expensive. Uh, maybe that's all cards in general and vintage graded cards, but uh, I'm not able to buy these for the price that I used to be able to buy them. So I've seen the prices uh, really shooting up lately. So uh, that's all I've got for you once again. Uh, these are my pickups. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you again soon.